Hello YouTube, it's uh, Steve here and uh, today we're going to be doing a uh, full review on uh, one of uh, Dyson's most popular machines to date. Yeah, we're going to be doing a review on the Dyson DC07. Now this is the uh, probably one of the longest running Dysons ever. Uh, this machine ran from about 2001 when it first came out right the way up I think they finally stopped making these in about 2009 so it has an absolutely massive massive run in production they ran in so many colours so many different colour schemes and variations and uh, different kinds of uh, specification this was an absolutely massive massive machine it was uh, extremely popular and I would think that to date the DC07 is probably one of the most numerous Dysons that are still available to buy today. You can't buy them new but uh, you've only got to go on eBay and uh, look through uh, used vacuum cleaners and uh, the amount of these that are still going round that basically uh, people buy them and they refurbish them and they sell them on again for around about the £60 mark and uh, in all honesty they do actually make very good value reconditioned cleaners. I actually did it myself for a little while by uh, buying these for uh, about 10, 15, 20 pounds. I'd fully strip them down, uh, clean them all up, put new filters in, belts and I would sell them myself uh, on eBay for the local people to come and buy. I used to get around about the 60 pound mark for the ones I used to sell but uh, I don't do it anymore simply because everybody else has jumped on the bandwagon. Every Tom, Dick and Harry now is trying to sell these DC07s as refurbished. You uh, you get sick to death to be quite honest of looking through eBay and every second cleaner you see the Dyson DC07 or a DC14. They are just so numerous. But if you are thinking of getting one and you've never had one before then uh, stay tuned. So I'll be talking about all the features that this cleaner has. Like I say, I know this machine absolutely back to front. I've stripped so many of these down to the bare component parts that, uh, quite frankly, it isn't funny. One thing about this is it's such an easy machine to work on. It is such an easy machine to service the Dyson DC07. And I think Dyson might have realised now what a big mistake he made in making this so easy to service because the amount of them now that are going second hand, people are buying those instead of buying new Dysons. So he's actually losing a lot of sales on new machines. Is that people just go out and say, oh well, I'll get a second hand one of these for £60, Dyson DC07. And uh, this one again, it's one I did buy to refurb originally, but um, it's in such good condition that I decided to keep it myself for the collection. So it doesn't get used, it basically stays upstairs in the loft in the dark to uh, keep looking good because it's actually a very very good example of a DC07 origin. This is the uh, non-clutched version. They did two versions of it, much the same with the DC04 which I've done in another video. But um, they, they basically uh, they were able to be used on hard floors or carpets and uh, if you wanted the all floors version then it would have I'll just get down here. The all floors version would have the clutch here on the side and the clutch knob, uh, so you could turn the brush roll on or off. But on the uh, Origin model, which this is, and this started off in life much the same colour in the yellow and grey scheme as the basic model, and it was called the original when it first came out. Um, but they had a lot more yellow, so you'd have a yellow in the shroud down here. This being one of the later models, I think this is probably from about 2008, one of the very early last ones before they discontinued them, they, um, they changed the design of it so that it became a lot more grey. So basically he, only, he, he removed a lot of the yellow parts off the machine basically and made it look a lot more, uh, I don't know, I suppose it looks a little bit more boring uh, in this colour scheme. I did prefer the, other, the, the earlier ones because they had a lot more yellow in, they were a lot more brightly coloured. But nevertheless, one of the big differences between the late models of these and the early models was the, um, the standard of the plastic. 
the early models were made of a uh, very sort of brittle type of ABS and uh, over the years if people used to leave them out in the light the sunlight, the UV light would damage the plastic, it would make it fade and also become extremely brittle. Now on the Dyson DC07 one of its very very weak points was this handle. So many of these early models here suffered from broken handles on the top of this bin that it just wasn't funny. Now you can buy the uh, bin lids, the bin tops here, the cyclone top assembly to replace these with and it's a very popular selling part, very popular. There are about 10 odd, odd to buy off eBay but uh, you can get them. But what you see is when you're looking through eBay so many of these with the, either they're cracked or completely missing. The cleaner still works but just, you, you can't pick it up by that handle anymore and that was the big weak point. They did uh, bring out a, a modification which made it sort of a, a double strength handle but this has only got the original single strength handle on. So, how did it differ from the DC-04? Because this was the replacement for the DC-04, which um, the DC-04 ran between 1999 and I think it was about 2003 or so that that became discontinued and this really took over from, from its position. This was the first ever multi-cyclonic vacuum cleaner. This was what Dyson called the Route 8 Cyclone and uh, it had basically, instead of having the dual cyclone where you had one single cone that used to fit inside here, this one had the original cyclone here in the bin plus seven cones around the top that uh, are inverted and run upwards and you can see those on the outside of this, uh, outside of this here. If you take the top off here you'll see the tops of the cones and the dust comes out of there and falls down a middle tube all the way down to the bottom. And essentially what you've got is the dust collection tube in the centre there for the fine dust. It's a massive collection chamber that runs the full length of the top of this so that the uh, cyclones spit all the fine dirt out and it all falls down the middle and ends up in the bottom here. Very, very large bin capacity on this machine. Um, something that Dyson's over the years since this machine have been getting smaller and smaller and smaller but this this was a huge bin capacity we do the biggest of houses with this before you had to empty it and uh, the laser models as I say the filter maintenance on them it was brilliant when you look down here this is where the pre-motor filter is on the side of the motor there and you remove that like so I mean this is actually a new filter that I, I, I had this done this machine up to sell but uh, I decided to keep it in the end so that's actually got another a new filter in, in there but you could go about six seven months and this wouldn't be dirty it would take a long time before you'd have to clean this filter nevertheless people used to forget about doing it completely because it was located down here on the side of the motor people didn't realise there was actually a filter inside here or they would take that off and look at that and say oh it's clean you know and they wouldn't actually take it out and look at the other side and some of the machines that I used to buy from eBay that were going for spares or repairs that was so clogged up it was just unbelievable it looked like somebody's had that machine for five or six years and never cleaned that filter Basically, all Dysons still have to have the filters cleaned eventually. And that goes in there. The early ones of these did have problems with the cyclone assembly in the top. The cones were too narrow at the top where they, where they came inside here and they would get clogged up. Also, the inside of here the dirt would get compacted down this tube over time in the centre and uh, when you open the bottom drop bin like so because it was on the on the top here you had a trigger so uh, basically you open that I and mean, then there is a bit of dust in there because I've used this before but uh, what happened 
was that um, this tube, when you look up there, would get compacted full of dust. And when you drop the bottom, because people didn't used to bang it on the side of the bin, that would actually get jammed up inside there and clogged. And uh, it would take a, maybe a year or so for that central column to fill right to the top. And it would also make this very heavy as well to pick up because that was completely full of dust. And I bought a few second-hand ones where that was the case. They were so full, it was full right to the very top. And uh, the filter was clogged as well. Because basically, once that centre tube gets full, the cyclones have got nowhere to discharge their dust. So that was a problem with this machine. But again, if you whacked it out properly, and you emptied it, made sure that this, this central tube was empty, then it wouldn't be a problem. So basically it was, um, this was the main design change from the DC-04 in that top there. Dyson reckoned that uh, by doing that it could step the power up and it would be a lot more efficient at filtering the dirt out. And he was right, it is. Very, very, very powerful machine. And uh, the motor wattage on this was stepped up from 1200 watts on the uh, DC04 to 1400 watts on this. So it's not really a powerful motor by today's standards because you have some bagless cleaners now that are operating at 2200 watts. So at 1400, this is a very modest machine. But it's also one of the biggest, biggest downfalls of this although it was a fantastic machine for cleaning, was it, was, it was the noisiest Dyson that was ever made. It, you know, if you, if you were going to buy a noisy Dyson, this is the one to get. Because these cyclones, especially the later models, are what causes the majority of the wind noise. The motor, as I say, is what I call a screamer motor. It's, uh, it's a YDK motor in there. 1400 watts and it's a noisy motor. It has that very high pitched whistle about it that really it uh, gets right into your ears. But as well as that motor noise you've got the extreme noise of the cyclone assembly as well. And when you hear it running later and if you use one of these, if you own one of these you'll know what I mean when I say about how noisy they are. But people thought because it picked up so well that the noise was necessary to show that it was, it was working well. But on the DC-14, which was the model that came after this, in 2004 they launched that, these cyclones were actually turned the other way around and went back down into the bin. Instead of out of the bin, they went straight into it. So it was a lot quieter, the cyclone assembly on the DC-14. So that was a big improvement. I will be doing a, di a demo on the DC-14 at a later date, as I do have one of those upstairs. On this, the uh, other difference between the DC-04 was the tools. They were the same tools, but they were located differently. On the DC-04, they were on top of the bin here. But because of the, the way the bin ch changed, Dyson had to build them in to the spine. You've got location there. You click the one tool in. And then on the other side, put the rusting brush. Same tools as before. Again, very good tools, these. And I've sung their praises on, on uh, the DC-04 video. And that just fits in there. It doesn't really matter which way around you have them. You can have the, that in the other side. It doesn't matter. And on the back, you have the crevice tool, which on this machine was a much more secure way of fastening it on. It had a clip fit with a little ridge around the top there. If you push this in and click into place. So there's no more of this falling off every time you pull the wand off. Much improved. Like I say, this machine was... People thought the DC-04 was wonderful. It was a massive improvement over the DC-01. But when this came out, it solved a lot of the problems that even the DC-04 had. So, the cable, we just unwrap that. Again, it's another design I like, where you've got the top one here and the bottom wrap there, so that the closer these two are together, the more work it is to keep wrapping it up. Basically, the more distance they are apart, it makes it easier and quicker to unwrap the cable. And what you could also do is turn that round and pull it off that way. 
by bass. The cable I think is 8 metres on this. And again, much like the DCO4, they did have, this was the wear point on these, they were going to break, they'd always break here on this grommet. Most cleaners suffer from this, it's the constant movement backwards and forwards on the cable, we end up fraying that cable inside and breaking it. They are re relatively easy to replace the cables on, you have to take the switch housing apart. On the back here, it's a very, very similar setup for the hose as what was on the DCO4 except this machine had one massive improvement and I'll show you that now. So we take it off in the same way, slide the hose down, now whereas on the old system you used to have to put the tool on the end of here like that and use it like so. Dyson finally realised on this that it would be easier to use the handle instead of, have, instead of having to hold it with that like so he realised what he should have done all along was that you could take this off here, just put that back in there like so, and that you could finally attach that to the top of the handle. That was what should have been all along. That makes this so much easier to use with the handle there be going along like so. Fantastic modification and not before time. And you have the clip button there to make sure it didn't come off on its own like that. Some people did moan then saying they didn't like it because then they had to fiddle and faff around then taking it off here and turning it around and putting it on there but I still think that was a very very good very good design. And again put it away and you can use that hose without the rod. Nice long stretch hose, Dyson were famous for. Even in the early models, they had a lovely long hose. Look at that. Get up the stairs with that. But one of the big, big problems with these was that they used to get damaged easily on this cuff here. That hose would rip. And the amount of these I used to buy second hand that I would have to either repair this or replace the hose. It was quite staggering. It was one of the biggest, biggest failure points on these was this hose. But nevertheless, they were a good, long stretch hose. With the power on this, what we did find was that when, the, when you had the tool on, on the end there, is that the hose did tend to pull itself back towards the machine. There was a lot of recoil in it because the, the pressure of the suction was so great You'd have to hold it with one hand, like this, like so, to use it like this. And you'd find there was a really strong pull backwards on that hose into the machine. Once you were used to it, though, they were okay. Because I mean, uh, this model was the first Dyson I ever had from brand new, and uh, it was about 2000, the early 2000s. Not long after they co they come out, I bought the purple and lime version of this, the uh, Allergy Plus, and. Uh, I had that for a few years, and I thought it was a fantastic machine. I put up with the noise on it, because it did a good job of the cleaning, basically. And um, a lot of other people thought exactly the same thing. But it's a very, very, very efficient machine for cleaning. Let's put those back in. So that's the ones on top of here. Again, as with the DCO4 before it, when it's in the upright position like this, the suction was diverted through here. So when you turned it on, you'd have the suction pulling through this hose here, this hole. So they provided a little cover for that, which in, again increased the noise because that would hiss like crazy when that was down. So I used to usually always keep that open on there to reduce the amount of noise when it was in the upright lock position. On the bottom, you had the same type of changeover valve here. Same, exactly the same setup as before on this. This was introduced on the DCO4 and it was carried over onto the DCO7. It was also this system 
was also used on the DC-14 and on the DC-33 as well. Very, very successful changeover valve style. Okay. Recline the machine in the same way as before. You put your foot on there, then bring that down. Change over valve. Would we'll operate there to bring the suction down to the floor head. And when you put it back up again, it would operate to send the suction up the pipe here. That was easily removable. So you could get your finger in there to clean it out or up there. Blockage inspection ports. And what I'm thinking as well is that sometimes I used to see. Now this is a handy hint here, is that sometimes when you're uh, vacuuming along, is that this will get knocked on furniture as you're going along, and it will get knocked down like that. And what that will mean is that all of a sudden, you will find then that you can't recline the machine. Sorry, you can't stand it upright. No matter what you do, that will not engage into the upright lock position. And I've seen some of these machines on eBay that people are actually selling for that sole reason, is that they can't understand why it is that the machine all of a sudden won't stand up on its own. And it's because they've knocked this assembly down here out of line. Now the very easy way of sorting that is to stand it up. There's a little black button here. You press that in, bring this back up like so, click it back up, and then you'll find it's fixed. Simple as that. And people are selling these cleavers as spares or repairs simply because they've knocked that adjuster out of line there. And that is how you repair that. So you're reclining it, and all of a sudden you might knock this, like so, because you can do it, it's easy to do. When these get worn, and then it won't stand up again, like that. So again, press that black black button in there, slide it back up, and it's repaired. Simple as that. I thought I'd mention that in this video because, uh, you know, it, it's such an easy thing to do when they won't stand up on their own. Right. So we've talked about the um, changeover valve, talked about the hose, the tools, the on and off switch is here on the top, slightly different place to the DC-04 when it was down here on the side. This switch position here was more that they used on the DC-03 on the handle there. The filters I've already showed you here, that's the pre-motor filter. It does not have a pre-motor filter in the bin, this does not come apart. Although you can use a Torx driver to remove the top of this. Unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't recommend it because then it becomes difficult to get the push rod back in that operates the door at the bottom. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that tell you how to do it anyway, if you do want to do it. The bin release, as I showed you before, is that uh, trigger there. You pull that up. It operates a rod that pushes all the way down to the bottom and opens that. It's possible to open this and then take the bin off the same way as you did with the DC-04, like so, which will enable you to clean the shroud. These do come apart, but they're very fiddly to do. So, it, unless you know what you're doing, just wash that down, rub it, brush it down. But uh, one of the biggest criticisms that I did have of these was that they were so difficult to disassemble, disassemble for cleaning. Because when you do take this shroud off, and take all these fins off. The amount of crap that accumulates inside here, behind uh, this shroud, goes all the way up to the top, and it is thick with smelly filth. And I can smell that now as well, because I've used it since, and I haven't cleaned it out again, and they do smell. So people that moan about bags cleaners smelling, bagless ones do as well, even Dyson's. Especially if you have dogs. So that fits together like that. Onto the bin, you have the filter. Now if I get my screwdriver here, these, these are replaceable. Just 
depending on what model you bought, was uh, depend then what type of filter you had under here. This was the origin model, so it would only have a base basic filter in here. You could have the uh, top of the range ones, which had a HEPA filter in here. Now on the DCO4, I showed you what the HEPA filter looked like on that. But this one, you need a screwdriver into here, and it's actually quite fiddly to do. So on the newer ones, there's a clip on the side there. One, two, three. That then enables the top to come off, and you see your filter pad in here. Now again, when I refurbed this to sell, I did put a new filter pad in there. That's why that's not very dirty. But you can buy these filter pads on the internet for next to nothing now. The aftermarket ones, a couple of pounds, these exhaust pads. You can buy the HEPA filters as well to go inside there for not much more. Again, the aftermarket now. The case for this machine in such a big way, you can get every part you can think of for this machine. That's why there's so many of them for sale on eBay. Because every Tom, Dick and Harry now wants to refurb Dyson's to sell on. That's not good news for Dyson himself. Because he's not selling new machines. And it's his own fault for making these things too simple that uh, most average uh, blokes like me can take these apart, replace motors in them, do anything you want with them. Very, very easy machine to maintain. So, that then filter goes back in there, in the top, either like that, or you can put it in the top of the housing there. Locates in the lug on the back. And then clicks down firmly. The old models didn't used to have the clips here on the side, it was just one clip on the front. So it was the same process, get the screwdriver under there and lever that up. Nice and simple. So there's your one filter, there's your other filter. Again, you can buy these on eBay as well for a few pounds, aftermarket. That's not a genuine Dyson one, that's an aftermarket filter. Underneath, you have the brush roll. Yeah, just bring this up to the camera here, show you the bottom. There was a difference here on the brush roll between the clutch models and the clutchless models. This is a clutchless model, which means it has a cylindrical. I mean, you can see the dirt, the dust on there, how much that uh, picks up. But I know it has sparse brush, brush rolls, uh, bristles on here, but it does seem to do a good job. It's a uh, cylindrical one rather than the Helix one. The Helix one features on the ones with the clutch. Now, you have your little pipe here. Again, these are another problem area on these cleaners. They do split uh, over time. And the amount of these I found on second-hand machines where people had wrapped uh, sellotape and duct tape round them because they'd, they'd split. They're easy enough to buy online, a few pounds for those. Again, get them aftermarket. The sole plates, if I just put it down here, use my screwdriver. Very easy to remove. One, two, three, like so. That comes off very easily. Okay. And there, what we can see is our drive belt. Okay. It has one single drive belt on the Origin model, which is why I like these ones, because they're easy to maintain. You've got your motor spindle there, one drive belt to the brush roll there, like so. There are videos on YouTube that tell you how to change these belts. It's not hard to do, but you have to remove this yellow part hold here and the brush roll. It can be a bit of a struggle to get this back on again, but replacing the belt on a DCO7 Origin is an awful lot easier than doing one with a clutch. There we go. 
and you can also clean the brush rail out nice and easily as well and make sure you can clean any blockages out of that hose. So on the whole, they were very, very easy machines to look after, very easy machines to service the DC-07. You can see on the bottom of here as well, you had your U-bend. Same as on the DC-04, that would trap any large items. Make sure you can clear blockages here in the bottom of the hose. That slips on nice and easily, just like so. That will come off. This is what they call the internal hose. You can replace that, dead easy. Screws on there and pulls off there. So, that's easy enough to put back on. Except when you're filming. goes the lugs on the front there. It has to be in the upright position like this so you can get that there, the belt guard, past this part here. But it will go. Get my screwdriver. Then tighten these up again. One quarter turn on each one. We could use a 10p coin. Dyson tried to design these so that you didn't need to use tools to maintain the machine yourself. It is possible to actually change that belt on there without using a single screwdriver. All you need is a 10p coin. That housing just pulls out and you have to stretch your new belt in. It's very easy to do. And like I say, there are YouTube videos on it. So there we go. That was all the features of the DC-07. One of the similarities again here, we've got the, the dirt port there which comes up from the floor head. That should always be dirty in there, and that should always be clean. Well, no, actually, this, that's not the case with this one, because the filters in the bottom are here, that will get dirty down there. That's normal, because that port there sucks straight from the cyclone assembly there, unfiltered air. But because these are very efficient, that doesn't tend to get very dirty, you just get very fine dust in there. Fits together like so. So, Let's give it some work to do. I'll put the bag of filth down on the carpet here. Move the cable out of the way, plug it in. Just make sure it works. I don't mind about putting the bag of filth on the carpet with this one because uh, it was dirty to start with. So I'm going to bother cleaning it again afterwards because I'm not selling this one on. There we go. The usual dirt container there I use with the others. So you've got your grit, cat litter, all the other usual stuff that I put down, the salt, tea, tea leaves, fine tea, plastic, stones, all there, and all the things that you expect cleaners to be able to pick up. So, cover your ears people, we're taking off.
Well, after that, I am suitably deaf. My goodness, what a noisy machine. Well, I'll tell you what, though, it cleans. And that carpet, despite that brush oil having quite sparse bristles on, that has absolutely brought the pile up on there beautifully. In my opinion, that type of brush roll with that type of belt on the Origin model, if you've got carpets, is the best one to go for. I talked about the pros and cons of the clutch unit on the DC04 video. But uh, on this, the Origin model, if you've only got, like I say, like, my, like I have in my house, mainly all carpets, this is an ideal machine. What it also does, because the brush roll continuously goes round when you're trying to use the tools, it automatically raises the brush roll a long way off the carpet. You can see that there. So you can, you'd have to really tug that over like that before it would start engaging with the carpet. So that's very good design to make sure that that brush roll does not scorch the carpet when you use the tools. This um, turbo brush was what they supplied with the very early Dyson models. I think you'd have got, got one of those on the DC-04 when they came out. The ones that were available at this time were a lot, lo a lot louder Dyson owned design. But this is actually a Wesselwork floor head that Dyson bought and had their own name put on because it's exactly the same turbo brush as you get on a Miele. If I just get a Miele one, See, from that, it's exactly the same turbo tool. And these sell for about £35. And they still supply these with mealers even now. It's exactly the same. This is a very, very good quality. If you can get, get one of these on eBay with the Dyson logo on, the 32mm neck, they're a very good turbo tool to get. So, we'll just put the cable back on, on the back of the machine, which on this one doesn't take long. Of course, the cable wraps are so far apart and it's done already, and then you clip it on like so. Just have a look at the uh, pre motor filter here. As you, I did show you earlier that was absolutely clean. Now, look at that. That is the mark of a very, very efficient, good cyclone assembly. The late models of those, he got it right. That filter just doesn't get dirty, it takes an awful long time for that to need cleaning. So much so is that, like I say, people forgot about doing it. So eventually after several years, yes, it would get all clogged, but it would take a long time. Fantastic. Fantastic. This is the, as I say, it was the most, the machine I worked on most when I was doing these up. And I love doing them. You know, they, they were so easy to work on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to think about taking a DC-41 apart. What Dyson's realised, like I say, is that he made these too easy to maintain. And he's not going to do that anymore. You don't see many refurbished DC-41s on the market. You don't see many refurbished DC-25s. Because they're a lot more complicated and the parts are a lot more expensive. But you can buy these motors for these cleaners, for what I call the YDK Screamer motor, for about 20 quid on, uh, on eBay. You get aftermarket ones of those and uh, they're so easy to fit. You can do them on your own. It really is one of the best machines that Dyson has ever made, despite the noise I think people put up with the noise because it does such a good job. And this is why they're still so popular now. Um, you know, if, if I had to rate this machine, I would give this machine 
9 out of 10. 90%. It's a fantastic old Dyson, this is. It's the noisiest one they ever made, and that's where it loses that one point from. Because if it wasn't as noisy, this would get 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 this machine would get from me, if it wasn't as noisy as it was. So there we go. If, you, if you're interested in buying one of these on eBay, as a refurbished machine, go ahead. I would highly recommend it. These people that strip these down and put them all back together again, you know, they're trying to earn a bit of bread and butter in Tory Britain, 2014. Give them a helping hand and buy what they produce. Because a £60 one of these in good condition that's been refurbished will save you an awful lot of money on a DC-41 where you're going to be paying nearly half a grand, uh, £400 for a machine that is not as good as this, that is not as reliable as this, and is not as robust as this. That is, I mean you really have to, it's only because I haven't clicked that in by the way, that is that, but you have to really, really shake that and it wouldn't do any, you know, I can't, I can't emphasise enough what a brilliant machine the DC-07 was. But there we go, I'll end it there, been uh, rambling on again for 46 minutes, shows how much I love this machine, it's uh, from me, until next time, and the DCO7 Origin, I'll say bye for now. <laughs>